Hello my soccer universe. Well, this is the leftover video from yesterday uh, where yeah, I just didn't get to it and I didn't want to make a super long video on the Europa League as well. And then I almost wanted to do a, a rant video on sh um, shirt sellers today, but then uh, let's do this video. Um, I will start tomorrow yeah it's tomorrow you will get the first installment of the Serie A jersey review but I wanted to actually show you a shirt today but I said it's better to give you the draw probabilities because I think they are highly interesting especially in the Champions League yes still the Europa League background but I said I'm gonna put the Champions League team on so this is Manchester uh, City we who are of course the favorites as you've seen maybe in my stats cast uh, that I posted yesterday. In any case, I want to go through the draws. All of these will happen on Monday, which kind of puts me a little bit of a picky because you usually on Monday I shoot my league reviews. So I'm a little bit split on how I should do things on Monday or whatever, but you know, I'll figure it out and uh, you will get all the, all the reviews latest on Tuesday, I would think. So I would say we'll start with the Champions League draw where you see on top here, uh, you see the uh, top seeded teams and on the bottom you see the, uh, the second seeded teams. So uh, every team from pot one will have the return leg at home. And the draw rules of course stipulate you cannot play against a team that you've already played against uh, in the group stage. So Manchester City cannot play PSG and you cannot play a team from your federation. So uh, Manchester City cannot play Chelsea for instance. And Especially the second consideration is a rather important one when we look now at the overall draw. Having Chelsea fall into the second spot reduces the options for Chelsea significantly. So you see already, I kind of color coded it. Red is impossible. The green it is, the more likely it is. Of course, this doesn't mean it will exactly happen this way, but you see here the chances of happening. We see all of Chelsea's possible opponents and they have only four. Ajax, Real Madrid, Bayern and Lille. The rest is either English teams or Juventus they haven't played play against. So these are four opponents. And now in addition, since Real Madrid is also quite restricted because there are two Spanish teams in, in the second pot, makes suddenly the Chelsea Real Madrid matchup a very, very like, likely one. Of the I based this now of a simulation where I simulated the draw uh, 10,000 times. Of the 10,000 uh, draws, 32% featured Chelsea against Real Madrid. So this is a one out of three chance that we get this major matchup. I also have, have, have to say, if I look at Chelsea, uh, yes, you might want to hope maybe for a little potentially Ajax. It's basically a 50-50 chance that, that you go lucky with that one. Uh, so Chelsea, as I said, since there are so limited poss possibilities, those uh, draws suddenly become very, very, very likely. Now, if you look at the others, um, I mean, you can study it and now uh, and stop it and look at your team. But I want to point out a few in 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 interesting ones. Um, for instance, Bayern has no restriction whatsoever, uh, but they suddenly have 21% that they play Chelsea because of the, re the restrictions. Um, Real Madrid. Also, not unlikely, there is a 50% chance that Real Madrid will play against PSG or against Chelsea. Major matchup, major matchup right there that I find very interesting. Um, other things that pop out, I mean, it's those, those 20%, I mean, there are 90% chances you're Inter against uh, City or Liverpool uh, or similar to Villarreal and also Atletico Madrid has 90% chance to play either an English team or Juventus. I mean, Atletico against Juventus would be uh, also interesting. Uh, quickly from the Austrian perspective, you know, uh, Salzburg definitely would want to play a team. I'm not sure if they would want to play uh, Ajax. Uh, but I think of all the opponents, Ajax or Juventus seem probably the most doable teams that you could advance if there's ever something like it. They are rank outsiders, however it goes. However, Ajax is the least likely opponent and Ajax is the team that against whom Salz Salzburg kind of made a little bit their, um, how do I say, their name by beating Ajax. I it was 2014, I want to say, when they beat them in two legs uh, rather convincingly. So yeah, uh, kind of interesting. And for Salzburg, of course, an English opponent or Real Madrid, it's also the most likely one. So you see already how this kind of goes. 
Moving on to the Europa League draw, where we have now, this is the playoff draw, we have in pot 1 the, uh, the runners-up in the Europa League group stage, which interestingly enough get a home game second, although I think in general they are all not favored against well, whoever comes down from the Champions League, especially if we look at teams like Leipzig, Porto, Barcelona, Atalanta, Sevilla, Dortmund. I forgot Dortmund. <laughs> I think only Sheriff and Zenit uh, in certain constellations like playing against Napoli or maybe Betis would not be considered outsiders. So uh, I think that draw in itself is also very interesting. And what we had with uh, English and Spanish teams in the Champions League, we have here now with Spanish and Italian teams in the Europa League playoff draw. What we do not have is we do not have that diagonal that's not uh, possible because we have it coming from the Champions League, so in principle, we don't have any group re restriction, which makes makes things easier. And so, uh, if you look, for instance, now at Atalanta, it's very likely that Atalanta, the only Italian team that is coming down from the Champions League, uh, is very likely to play a Spanish opponent, uh, meaning Real Sociedad or uh, Betis, because uh, those are the most restricted ones, because we have with Sevilla and Barcelona two Spanish teams in there. Uh, so we have a total of four Spanish Spanish teams that, of course, cannot play each other. Uh, so that I find interesting. Also, it's, of course, interesting that um, Barcelona is most likely going to play. And again, this is more likely than others. It's very even here. This is much less um, uh, offset as we have it in the, in the Champions League. But Barcelona and Sevilla have uh, roughly the same percentages and more likely to play Napoli, Lazio or Braga, who is another restricted team because Porto cannot, of course, play Braga. So it's those restrictions that really uh, play into it. Uh, it also means that due to, this due to these restrictions, if you look in, for instance, first line Rangers, that suddenly the restricted teams become a lot more likely, meaning Barcelona, Atalanta, Sevilla. I find this rather fascinating and also very logically if you just think about it in a probabilistic sense. So I uh, probably had already time to look for what are the chances that your team will play against, but it's still a much more even draw than a Champions League draw. Uh, and let's go into Europa League where we have one problem. We don't know the run up for Group G. Yet. It's either Vitesse or Spurs. So I don't know now the exact draw procedure, but I would imagine since we have coming down from the Europa League, we have uh, PSV who could not play against Vitesse and we have Leicester uh, coming down uh, who could not play Spurs, that I would assume that uh, in the draw they will leave this open and they, 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 and they will say the second place team from Group G cannot play PSV or Leicester. So there is a double restriction in there. This is how I would imagine it. Uh, other than that, the only restrictions are we cannot have a Prague Derby, which is a shame, and we also cannot have two Danish teams play against each other. And you see already the teams that are in there, there is definitely a step down, and, I've, and I would definitely say that almost, if not all, of the Europa League teams should be favored over the ones from the Conference League, just by the uh, the look of it. Uh, and I'm th again, I'm looking a little bit from the Austrian perspective, if I'm a Rapid Vienna, I'm actually looking very favorable at this draw. I just would want to avoid uh, whoever comes from F and G. Maybe even Slavia Prague is also a team that I would not want to have. But the rest, I think I will take that uh, and would feel confident about it. And then feel embarrassed when I fail to qualify for the next round. So uh, that also is an ob observation that I definitely made. So um, with this restriction, of course, a group winner G becomes very likely uh, a group runner up for uh, Conference League Group G. Uh, it's very likely then for the other Europa League teams that are not from Netherlands or from uh, England to play against the most likely outcomes, exactly that one against Sparta Prague, who of course are the other one, or against Midtjylland. Again, makes sense. Other than that, a very very even uh, draw so um, it uh, should be rather straightforward there. Uh, we will have the draws then for the round of 16 for the Europa League and the Conference League this comes then um, in February which I find a little bit of a shame because it would be nice to uh, know but you know I understand they want to keep kind of the tension up a little bit but I think it would be nice to make like 
have all the draws for the games in February and early March already done now that we know who plays against whom and maybe even then avoid also some if whatever rest restrictions or so the round of 16 draw I think will be an open draw. Last thing, I actually think I would get rid in the knockout stage of country restrictions because uh, especially in the Champions League, if you look at it, uh, it makes it absolutely uneven. There are certain uh, variants that go forward. Uh, you know, uh, that the certain draws that are way more likely than others and it contributes a little bit to too much unevenness and while that might be an incentive in the group stage to make the pots a little bit uneven, I actually hear it um, promotes that teams from, this, from one single country in a dominant country like England is now that all these teams kind of sweep through. Um, it would be, I think, in interesting if Chelsea could play, let's say, a Manchester City or a Liverpool in a round of 16 matchup. I don't see a big trouble with that one, honestly, but that's my opinion. Any case, what do you think about the draw? What is your dream draw for your team or in general? We haven't draw talk talked about that, but you know, it's also a fun thing to know. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below, uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will give you some draw reaction probably Monday evening-ish something like that. Any case, talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.